welcome back to Pastor Connie's Couch of Creativity. I'm so glad that you're with me today. Today we continue our journey of exploring the book of Mark in our series. On your mark, get set, go! Today we're going to be looking at a story of Jesus as he's going into the synagogue for the first time after he's been baptized and gone into the wilderness and come back. He's preached the good news in the area. He's called four disciples so far and now he goes into the synagogue. So we're going to see what happens as he enters this place for the first time after those other events have taken place. Our big idea for today is that Jesus' love is greater. Jesus' love is greater. Whatever we're going through today, we're gonna have we're gonna see Jesus interact with a man in our story who's having a really hard time with something happening in his life. And Jesus shows his love by by helping him. And so in our story today, Jesus is going to interact with somebody in the temple and we're gonna see how he uses his power to help others. So Jesus's love is stronger and greater than whatever hardship that we're dealing with. So that's kind of our big idea for this morning. I want to remind you of a few things that on our website at northfresnochurch.org backslash church online. All of our resources are there, this video, as well as um, these lovely worship bulletins. You can download at that location or on our Google Classroom, as well as any extra resources that we have, like our coloring page will be available also at that space. So later on for our craft time, we are going to be making this little rainbow um, with a reminder that and I'll be explaining it later. This is a reminder that Jesus love is, is greater than whatever hardship we're going through. Jesus love is greater. And it's a reminder that Jesus' love is with us. So that's our activity today. This little beautiful thing, these, and then we'll be having some other fun. Um, as we explore this idea of Jesus' love being greater than whatever we're going through right now. All right, have a good time and I'll see you around.
My God is so big. So you need to stand up and I want you to show me your muscles and follow along. Here's how it goes. My God is so big. Show me your muscles like this. So strong and so mighty. Show me your mean face. Ooh, your tough face. There's nothing my God cannot do. And then clap for you. And point to the camera, point to the TV, point to your sister, your brother, point to your dad, point to who's ever in the room, okay? So let's do that together. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. And then here's that verse. The mountains are his, the valleys are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. Ready? Let's do it again, a little bit faster. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. The mountains are his, the valleys are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. All right, now we're going to do that whole thing, but you ready? So get your little teeny fingers ready and here we're going to do it again. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. The mountains are his, the valleys are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is Now we're going to do super big. Get your arms ready for big time. You ready? My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. The mountains are his. The valleys are his. The stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. Our God is big. Hope you had fun. Let's sing together that he is the king of everything. Ready? Here's how it goes.
idea for today is that Jesus' love is stronger. So I want to teach you this fun game. You probably already know it. It's called Rock, Paper, Scissors. Have you ever played that game? So what you do is you take your palm like this and lay it out, and then take your, your other, your right hand, and make a fist. And we're gonna hit it two times, one, two, and on the third time, we're gonna choose between a rock, paper, or scissors. Now, if you do a rock, what's stronger than a rock is a paper, because you could put a paper on top of a rock. If you do paper, what's stronger than paper are scissors. You can cut through paper. And then if you do scissors, what's stronger than scissors is a rock. You can smash the scissors. So the question is, what's stronger, a rock, a paper, or scissors? So with three of us playing, we're going to go one, two, three. And when we do the third time, we're going to see which of our three objects is the strongest object. All right. So we're going to do a few times and see who's best at playing this game. It's totally random, but it's kind of fun to play. You ready, guys? Uh -huh. All right. Rock, paper, scissors. Okay, you ready again? Do it again? Oh, you're out. Are you ready, Abby? Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, Abby yeah. won. Nice. Just like that. Let's do it again. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors. No. Oh, <laughs> smash. Rock, paper, scissors. Pizza! <laughs> Oh wait, I didn't do that one. Okay, redo, redo. That looked like a scissors to me. I think you're out. I think that was a half scissors, yeah. half rock. <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so enjoy playing this game and seeing which is the strongest. Rock, paper, or scissors. activity today we're going to be making a rainbow chain so the supplies you're going to need are some yarn any kind of yarn will do some glue a pen scissors and then I'm gonna make my chain using all the colors of the rainbow as well as you're gonna need something white um, to be like a cloud all right, so in our story today, um, we're going to be talking about how Jesus's power is stronger. His power is stronger over anything that's going on in our lives. So we're going to make a visual of, of what that really means. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be making some clouds that kind of represent sad times or hard things that are going on in our actual lives right now. And we're going to be placing our clouds. We're going to make like a whole chain of things. So the top will be a, like a rain cloud. So the, these hard things that we're going through right now, maybe it's it's not going to, not being able to go to school or it's not being able to see your grandma and grandpa. Something that's really not good that you're sad about because that's a real reality that we all are in right now and that life, life is all about sometimes having these bad things happen to us. So in the cloud, we're going to write something that's hard for you right now and it could be different for you different for me um, and then we're going to make a tri a little chain of different rainbow colored hearts as a reminder that jesus's love is stronger than whatever is in your cloud and it's okay to be sad about the things in your cloud because that's that's real and we need to feel those feelings but to also be reminded that jesus's love is stronger and his presence is with you right now all right so the first thing actually we're gonna do the cloud last but i'm going to first so i have all this yarn and i don't really know how long my chain's going to be yet so i'm going to wait to um, to glue that on the first thing i'm going to do is make a whole bunch of hearts i think i'm going to do two do a long chain that has one full strand of rainbow color so red orange yellow green blue purple and then another cloud and then red blue orange green blue purple so i'm going to do um two different colored hearts and two different clouds. I'm going to start off with my red and each heart needs three different hearts to make it because we're going to be, it's going to be three dimensional, but don't worry. I'll, I'll guide you through it. All right. So I'm going to take my red paper. I'm going to fold it in half. So it looks like that. I'm going to fold it in half again. Okay. So put your fold. You should have a fold on the top and a fold along the side. Okay. So now, 
With the fold on the side, you're going to draw half a heart because we're going to cut it along the fold. So when we open it up, it'll be a full heart. So I'm going to draw half a heart. Okay, so there's half my hearts. So half a heart, half a heart. And now we're going to cut out half our hearts. And try to make them kind of the same size. If you wanted to do a template that you're um, copying, you could always do that. One heart. But it's okay if they're all a little bit different. Because we're all a little bit different, huh? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Now, each color needs three hearts. Because so what we're going to do is we're going to glue that together and glue this together so that it makes a three-dimensional heart. But we'll do that later. Okay, so there's three hearts here. And now I need to go get more paper because I need two pieces of paper per color. So hold on just a minute. Okay, so I have another sheet of, yeah, of red. Fold it in half like that. Crease. Fold it in half again, Whoop. crease, fold on top, fold on the side, and then on the side, with your fold on the side, draw another heart, heart, and draw another heart, half heart, and up. And cut it out. Okay, so now I have enough hearts that I can do. I, uh, here's my heart of three. Here's my heart of three. You need three hearts for each, each of your chains. So I'm gonna take some time now and do the rest of my colors, and then I'm gonna show you how to put it on your chain. All right, now that I have all my hearts cut out, are you good? Okay, <laughs> now that I have all my hearts cut out, um, the next thing I'm going to do is to draw my two clouds. So the way I'm going to do that is take my construction paper, my white construction paper, and fold it in half. So we're going to glue it, glue the string in the middle. So I want my two sides of the cloud to um, be the same. So kind of like we did with the hearts. So once you have two sides, um, we're going to take our pin and just draw a big poofy cloud. There's no wrong way to draw a cloud. Okay, right. and then cut your cloud up. There's my cloud, and oh, there's two clouds. Now, if you're like me and you didn't uh, cut along the lines too well, you're gonna wanna put make that your inside. So before we do the next thing, I want us to think about something that's happening in your life that is kind of a bummer. And we're gonna actually write that. You could either write it on the inside of your cloud and only you know about it, or you can write it on the outside of your cloud. Either way, it is totally up to you. So I'm gonna get a darker color. Actually, I'm gonna first outline my cloud just kind of for fun. I'm gonna see which I like better having an outlined cloud or just a big poofy white cloud. And then once you see mine, you can decide if you like it outlined or if you'd rather to leave it blank. Poofy? Outlined? Not outlined. Oh man, hard decision. Okay, so anyways. Um, so now I want you to think about something that is happening in your life that you're frustrated about or you're sad about or you're worried about, something that kind of brings you down and is difficult. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and write uh, COVID-19, this virus thing, cause I miss seeing all of you and I miss seeing all my friends and my family and <sighs> so I'm gonna write that. And you can write anything you want on your cloud. 
Okay, so now the next step after we have our clouds done, is we're gonna tie in all of our hearts. Cause remember, Jesus's love is stronger. So we have these really negative things going on in our lives. And that's unfortunately just kind of part of life. But it's good to remember that Jesus's love is just like that paper, rock, scissors game. His love is stronger than all the stuff that we're, <laughs> that we're going through. Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. Hmm. Okay, so now once you have the end of your string, we're going to start gluing it together. So first, I'm gonna figure out how these two match. That wasn't too hard. All right, so I'm gonna take my, when the rain falls, the clouds are on the top and then it falls down, right? So we're gonna do our cloud on the top and put a line of glue and then glue down. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit on top so I can tape it some more. Okay, and then once you have your, can you see that over my hand? Once you have your yarn in place, then you're going to overlap it with the other one. Okay, so this is my little rain cloud. I'm just a little rain cloud. Have a rain under the tree. Here's my, my rain cloud. Now we're gonna add some hearts. Remember our rainbow heart to hearts to remind us that Jesus is more, Jesus's love is more powerful. Now we're gonna take um, three hearts. It takes three of them to make our um, our figure. So this could be a little bit tricky to watch, but here's what I want you to do. Look for three hearts that are similar. Remember we made a few different ones. Here's one heart, two hearts, and three hearts. So we're gonna put them together so that they're actually, it's a three-sided heart. Can you see that? Can you see how I did that? So it might be easiest just to take one heart and put glue on one side. And take another heart and glue that side together. And if it doesn't line up, it's okay. It doesn't need to be perfect. And then fold it over and do it again. Put glue on this side. Remember we want three total. Glue it. And fold it over. And fold it all the way over. Oh, I didn't put the string in the middle. Let's carefully pull it all apart. Actually, we could do this. <laughs> okay, we're gonna carefully put our string, our heart at the top and fold it in. Now, if I did this right, So you don't even see the string in the heart now. Okay, so we have red. What color comes next in the rainbow? Mm -hmm. Purple, green. Let's do an orange together. Let's get three oranges. Okay, so take one heart, glue one side, smash it with another, fold. Glue another side, smash it with another. And we're gonna both glue, get ready for the string and glue the side. String, glue. Urgh. Right. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna push pause on the video, or maybe I'll just do a, a quick super speed. Okay, so I have my 
my rainbow chain of hearts with my cloudy day, sad something going on. And now let's see if it all holds together. Ooh. So if you wanted to make, so I have a lot of string left, so I could do a second cloud right here if I want to make a whole long, super long strand, or I could cut this here and just do another one, or I could just do one. Depends on how much time you have, how many supplies you have, and how much you like doing arts and crafts. Um, but this is a reminder that there's a lot of sad things that happen to us. Um, and it's okay to feel the sadness and to be able to name the sadness and recognize it. But it's also good to remember that Jesus's love is greater. And it doesn't make the sadness necessarily go away, but it helps us be able to walk through those sad times and know that God is with us. We're not alone in those times and that he will give us the strength and the courage to get through our times. All right, so this is our lovely craft for today. Have fun making it at your house. In our story today, Jesus goes into the synagogue and he begins to teach and he actually interacts with this man who has an impure spirit. So I wanted to kind of talk to you a little bit about what is an impure spirit. And the way I want to explain that is through this book that you might be familiar with. It's called Where the Wild Things Are. And what I want to ask you is, what in your life is a wild thing? And what are things that are our feelings or, or ideas that we get that maybe aren't the things of God, those things that are good and lovely and beautiful? So things that are wild things are thoughts of violence or jealousy or anger or hatred. Whenever we kind of have those feelings, those, those are kind of dropped in our minds or they come up from out of our hearts. And when we begin to entertain those thoughts and we get to kind of chew on those feelings and we think about them, and especially when we act them out, then these kind of, this impure language starts to become part of who we are. And then that's kind of how people have these um, impure spirits because they start off with a little idea, like I'm jealous of my brother. And then you think about it and then you kind of become jealous yourself. I'm pretty sure pretty soon um, you yourself are a wild thing like in this book. So in this book, I want you to keep your eyes open for um, Max is the main character. And he begins being, he's kind of like wild at the time. And his mom actually puts him in his room without dinner. And then he follows his wild side into this adventure, but then realizes when he's on this adventure that he's come to actually a very dark place. And he doesn't want to be there anymore. He wants to go back home. And then the wild things actually try to eat him up. And that's really is a good way to show you what it's like when you when you have these ideas of, of being mean and hating, and if you follow those too far, where it kind of leads. So we're gonna read this story, and then we ask you some questions, and then we'll continue um, with our Bible story, all right? So let's see how this goes. This book's called Where the Wild Things Are. Um, the story and pictures is by Maurice Sindic. Maurice Sindic. And I'm reading this story to all my friends. You guys ready for a story? The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind and another. Look at him chase the dog. Is that being kind? Look how afraid the dog is. His mother called him wild thing, and Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. Look how angry he looks. Ugh. That very night in Max's room, a forest grew. Look at the trees. His bed's turned into a tree. And grew. and grew until his ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around him. Look at that. He has quite the imagination, doesn't he? And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max and he sailed off through night and day. Not too bad so far. 
oftentimes when we follow these wild things, it starts off being not that bad. It usually ends up someplace not too great. And in and out of weeks and almost over a year into where the wild things are. Look at Max. Looks like he's even afraid a little bit. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. Till Max said, be still. And he tamed them all with a magic trick of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once. And they were frightened and called him the most wild thing of all. And made him king of all wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. And now he just has fun with the wild things. Look at them. Jumping around, swinging from trees. Going on parades. Now stop, Max said, and he sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max, the king of all wild things, was lonely and wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. Then, all around from far away, across the world, he smelled good things to eat. So he gave up being king of where the wild things are. But the wild things cried, oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up. We love you so. Now this is where Jesus comes in because when we follow the wild things to these dark places, it's sometimes hard to get away. But Jesus, as we'll see in our story, has power even over wild things like this. And Max said, no, the wild things roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye. You see, there he goes, sailing away. And sailed back over a year and in and out of weeks and through a day. and into the night of his very own room where he found his supper waiting for him. And it was still hot. Look at that, he did get his dinner after all. And now he's home. So that's just a little, little story to help you explain what this man has been going through. So here's a man in the synagogue, Jesus sees, who's saying, hey, you son of God, and Jesus, gets rid of this wild thing that the man has had as a companion for a very long time. So I hope that makes sense. If you have questions, you can always ask me and I'd like to talk to you more about it. And let's go to our next sequence. All right, so that's a, that's a great story. And up next, we're gonna actually hear our Bible story. And we're gonna see Jesus use his power to help somebody else who's kind of in that same wild thing situation or they need someone to rescue them out of it. So before we hear our story, we're going to go ahead and read our Lord's Prayer. And this week we have Teacher Carol and she is going to tell you the Lord's Prayer as well as say a little hello to all of you students who know Teacher Carol so well. So enjoy saying hi to Carol and then we're going to hear today's Bible. Hey boys and girls, do I ever miss seeing you and being with you? Oh my goodness, I miss telling stories to you and I miss singing and I miss you growing up. Some of you guys are well past three now and I can't even believe how old you are. So I am just missing you. So I hope you enjoy what you're doing now and I know you're anxious to get back into school and I'm anxious to get back into church so maybe that will happen for us this year in 2021. All right are you ready to say with me the Lord's Prayer? We've done it a lot before so let's give it a whirl now okay? All right remember it's in Matthew. All right our Father say it with me our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Did you say that with me? I hope so, because it's nice to learn it in little sections. All right. See you hopefully soon this year. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Okay, so let's see what Jesus says to this man in verse 25. He says, Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. And at once the impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. So sure enough, Jesus' love, his authority, he commands this impure spirit to leave this man, and he experiences healing, deliverance. He's set free. He's rescued. And this impure spirit, maybe it's that anger that he's been holding on to, or it's a bitterness or jealousy, is gone, and the man is set free. Jesus' love is stronger. One of the things we've been talking about in these last few weeks is that Jesus is God with us. We've been talking about how Jesus is God's very image. He is Jesus. He's God with us. And now he also came to show us God's love for us. And God's love isn't here beating people up and being aggressive, saying, Hey, I have all the power in the world, so I'm going to show you my power. As much as he's looking for people who are held in prison, who are prisoners and bound in their own kind of thoughts even, our own patterns or thinking of like our ideas of jealousy and anger and and rage. Those things have kind of bound us up and Jesus comes to set us free and to bring us healing. So Jesus' love is stronger. The verse 27 continues that the people were all so amazed that they asked each other, who is this? a new teaching and one with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly across the whole region of Galilee. So they are, they, everybody who's watching and listening, they recognize that Jesus has authority in how he teaches from the Old Testament, as well as his authority over these other spirits and all of our feelings and emotions. Now, I keep saying the Old Testament because in Jesus' day, obviously, there is no New Testament, right? Because the New Testament is about his life. So when he's reading the scriptures or the, the Torah, he's reading all from the prophets of old and the stories that we studied during the summer. So the stories of Moses and the stories of King David, um, all those kind of stories. So when he's reading, that's what he's reading, but he's reading it with authority. And he has authority over impure spirits. So this kind of authority is both authority with confidence as well as just he's the he's the very top. Jesus' love is is stronger than anything else. Just like the paper, rock, and scissors, his authority is above all others. Jesus showed that he has power over evil. He showed us that he's stronger than our worst enemy. But the best thing is about Jesus is that he never uses his strength to hurt people. Instead, we see him taking what he Instead of taking what he wants by force or using his power to help himself, he uses his power to help others. And that's our our challenge as followers of Jesus is to be people who use our own gifts and our talents and our abilities to help other people, not to impose those on people, but to use them to help others and build each other up. So for you and I, that's our challenge. So I have some three questions for you. Alrighty, put my pencils down. My first question for you today is this. How does Jesus show his love to the man in the synagogue? To this man who has the impure spirit, how is his love shown to him? What do you think? Yeah, this is some good thoughts. So maybe Jesus shows this man his love by bringing him healing, by delivering him from from this companion that he's had for such a long time. Here's another question. I want you to think about this one. What kind of power do you have? There is a lot of power that's in this idea of having authority. So maybe you're like a big brother, big sister, or maybe, I don't know, what do you have? Everybody has some kind of power. Some, some is greater and more obvious and some is not as easy to see, but Think about your own life. What are you really good at? What kind of power do you have? And how can that help others? Maybe you have the power to make people laugh. You ever notice that? Someone who has that natural ability to just kind of bring laughter places? That's a special ability that you have. Maybe you have the power to be a good friend. Maybe you have the eyes to recognize when someone's feeling like they don't belong and you can see that. So your power is to go and make sure that they're included and bring them in. 
Another idea is maybe you have the power to speak up for others. You recognize when maybe something isn't right or there's an injustice going on in your school. Maybe something simple like your teacher is passing out paper and someone didn't get one and they're super quiet and they're just not going to say it. You can say, oh, hey, teacher, I think I think so-and-so needs a paper. So maybe you're just aware you can see people that needs, need you to speak up for them. Or maybe your power is to see the best in other people. There's a lot of us that walk around and we just don't see the good things about ourselves. So we need those of you that have eyes to see the good things to say, hey, you do a really good job at that. I love how you did blah, blah, blah. So maybe you're really good at having those eyes to see other, see good things in people and to lift them up. So we all have power. We all have these unique special abilities. So what powers do you have? What are you really good at? And how can you use those things to help other people? Just like Jesus used his power here with this impure spirit and set the man free. And that's kind of my, it goes into my third question is how can you live like Jesus this week by using your strengths to help others? And so it takes a lot of um, intention. You have to be thinking about how can I use my strengths to help others as you're going through life? Because it's hard to remember all that in the middle of your day. So I challenge you this week to be like Jesus, to use your, your power and your authority to help others. Have your eyes open to see other people. Maybe it's just your, your sibling or maybe it's your mom or your dad, um, your grandma or your grandpa. How can we be people who are helping others by our God-given gifts and abilities? going to ask you to pray and then we'll close for the day. Okay, so let's go ahead and pray. Dear Father, we invite you to show us Jesus's love. Just as he showed your love to us. I pray God that we will be people who carry Jesus's love with us wherever we go this week. Open our eyes to see how we can help others and give courage to others and speak out for others and help others. May we follow Jesus's example and use our strength and our power to help people around us. In Jesus name, amen. All right, well, thanks for joining me today. Hope you had fun and I hope that you walk like Jesus this week and help others in whatever gift and power, unique ability that you have. All right, see you next week.